Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Mass Business Podcast. My name is Matt Ward. I'm your host, and I'm really excited to be bringing you today's episode. We got a great guest for you. But before I do that, as a reminder, I want to remind you that I've written two books. Uh, the first one is More Word of Mouth Referrals, Lifelong Customers, and Raving Fans. That's out on Amazon. That came out in 2018. It's about how to get more referrals in your service-based business. The second of which came out in October of 2021 called The High Five Effect, How to Do Business with People Who Bring You Joy. And that was, I believe, my life's work, something you can grab at highfiveeffect.com. That's all spelled out. You can also get that on Amazon in paperback, ebook. And maybe in 2022, we'll have audiobooks for both of them. So I'm really excited to bring you this week's guest. This week's guest is Tyler Smith from Trajax. They provide marketing solutions and campaign execution for businesses small and large in the Boston area with a focus on the experiences and needs of startup founders. They landed their first client through a surprising connection with an old contact, which we're going to talk about that. And that relationship opened up a remarkable set of opportunities. And that wasn't the only customer that they found through an unexpected channel. So we're going to dig into that, maybe give you some tips and tricks on your business. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Mass Business Podcast, where small business owners, also known as risk takers, share their stories about the growth of their business and themselves. Our interviews and our content is focused on growing a small business and understanding networking and referrals. I say it all the time, and I'll say it again today, you never know where your next referral will come from. All right. Well, we are back on the podcast with Tyler Smith. And Tyler, welcome to the show. Thanks. It's great to be here. So just um, in a quick 30-second synopsis, can you share with our listening audience and those watching on YouTube what it is you guys actually do at your company? Of course. So Tradex provides um, any number of marketing solutions ranging primarily social media, email marketing, pay-per-click and SMS uh, automations and setup. So we provide all those services for various companies in this area. Everyone from, we've worked with large companies down to small nonprofits, startups, everything in between. Um, yeah, we've been doing this since about 20, 2020, we got really started. And we just continue to kind of grow our skill set and develop the things that we can do. So you got started during the pandemic, which is interesting because I've talked to um, businesses on this podcast that have been around for 20, 30, even 40 years. And then I've also talked to businesses that have been around just one year, uh, two years during the pandemic. And that's kind of in your situation. What have you seen about business growth in just this short time inside of a pandemic? Well, you know what's wild is technically we started in 2018. And I spent you know two years between October 2018 and July of 2020 looking for clients. I literally walked the streets with flyers, handing them out to any business who would take one, anybody. And like, I, nothing happened. I had nobody. And it was in the pandemic that things actually started to, to move. And I think it was because, you know, I had all these people at home, you know, business owners who were forced to pivot and shift their direction. You know, our first client was somebody who didn't have an online strategy. And so when we connected with him, he was looking at this reality of like, I'm in a world where I can't do what I was doing pre pandemic. And so he was open to talking to me because he had to have faced the new world. And so that ended up actually working really well for us in a lot of ways. You know, that's interesting. And, and so struggles prior to the pandemic, take off during the pandemic, ban pandemic, doing well during the pandemic. Are you worried about what happens when the pandemic ends? <laughs> You know, I, I used to think about that, but I think I think it's still going to work to my advantage. And the reason is because, you know, there have been speculations, obviously, for the last 12 months, 24 months about whether the the shift to kind of an online world, the shift to 
remote work was going to be a temporary thing. But I think a lot of people now are looking at this at the situation where we're saying now the pandemic might end, but temporary, but like, um, you know, remote work, work is not around. ending. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. and that's been in my benefit. So I'm, I'm not really worried about the pandemic ending. I think it'll, if anything, it, it might help further. You know, and that's interesting because for 16 years, I owned a digital marketing agency and I sold it in 2018. And um, the guy I sold it to, we've stayed in touch. Um, they've grown through the pandemic. Their, their revenue is up during the pandemic. These are things that happen. You know, there, there were, by no doubt, a lot of businesses that did not make it through the pandemic. I knew some of those business owners. But there, are, I believe, are far more companies especially service-based businesses that either adapted or were in the market that was needed when the pandemic came mm -hmm. and they're thriving in the pandemic. And so I think, I think a lot of this is mindset. We talk about a lot about mindset on this podcast and really just how it pertains. What is your mindset going into your business every single day right now? When you start off the day, what, what are the types of things you're thinking about? Man, the absolute number one thing is just sheer persistence, bullheadedness. You know, if I, when I work hard, when I like buckle down and I do the hard things, the opportunities and the luck, you know, follows. And when I'm lazier or I'm not as aggressive in my pursuit of the next client or the next um, thing that has to be accomplished, you know, somehow luck fades away and success doesn't follow. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I found nothing to be more valuable to my company than my own, um, you know, pushing forward all the time. That, that's something I talk to my clients about in the referral world of the business because it's about the relationships. Right. And so the more consistent you are, so I, I, I usually put it like this, how do you outrun a bear? You don't, you outrun your friend. Right. And right. in the world of small business, you outrun the competition. It's about staying in touch with your contacts more than your competition does. And so the the struggle with that is this mindset is is that i'm reaching out to people i'm staying in touch but nothing's happening mm. and it's just about persistence with that like you were talking about it's just like every day i have to do these activities and i i refer to, to them as revenue generating activities mm -hmm. they 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 the things you have to do every day that j eventually generate revenue they don't always generate revenue that day but they eventually generate revenue um, and so it is definitely about staying persistent. Now, I want to go back to the introduction where we talked about where you you um, got some business from an unlikely contact or something like that. Can you share with the audience what it is you're referring to and what yeah, happened? Of course. So th this was the craziest thing. So, you know, I've been in the aquarium industry for the last five years or so. And I, you know, so I, I work in service. So what I do is I clean people's aquariums into people's houses. I travel all across Eastern Mass, and you know that's that's what I do. So even when even now I'm not full time in my business, I spend actually most of my days I'm cleaning fish tanks, and I go home and I work on the business at night. So I, I worked for this company in Framingham for a while uh, called Tropic Isle, great people, and I met a gentleman in Brighton who owned a, a shoe a shoe company, and I met with him and I cleaned his tank maybe three times, and then. I actually changed jobs and I didn't I didn't see him again for another it was two years that I saw that I didn't see him. So one day I'm cleaning I'm cleaning for this other company. I haven't even thought about this guy in a year. He um he sends me a text. I had the same phone number. He goes, Hey, are you still cleaning fish tanks? Can you come take a look at my tank? I said, uh oh, sure, I can squeeze you in. So I go down to Brighton and um I knew what he did, you know. So I'm I'm just cleaning the tank and I'm talking to him and he's telling me that, you know, the, the shoe company's been doing okay, but like they're in, at this point, they're in the middle of a pandemic and they haven't made a sale really, they haven't made strong sales in you know, six months. He goes, and the thing is we really need an online marketing strategy and we really need that help, but you know, we don't have it. And I, and I just had this moment where, you know, up to that point I had been, had this attitude of like, I got to make sure I charge everyone for everything I do. Like I'm not doing anything for free. And my, my partner had been saying, man, we got to just get somebody. We just got to, we got to get started somewhere. And, and in that moment, I was like, this is it. This is the opportunity. And so immediately when he said that, I, I said, I'll do it for free. My company will do it for free. And he goes, really? And, and that was it. That was the start. And so like then for the next 18 months, we, we got started with him. We, and we spent the next six months working for free for him. And we signed mm -hmm. like a deal after six months and, and, you know, things progressed from there. Good. But 
it was just it was just like being ready to kind of make that connection and jump on the opportunity when it appeared. And you know what's interesting about that, and and I'm not, you know, I, I don't advocate to everybody that you do a, any service for free for any mm-hmm. reason. That's that's an individual choice. But when I was with the web agency, we did work for Toys for Tots, a local Toys for Tots organization out of Devon's Mass, and we did some work for free for them. And they took us to the national conference and we had 45 clients within two years, all mm-hmm. Toys for Tots guys. We were doing all the major websites all around the United States for Toys for Tots locations, everywhere from Twin Cities to Miami to Dallas, Texas and um, Orange County, California, oh, big ones. And they were all paying clients um because we were getting referred in now i i think that it goes to to show it's important to say that it's not just about providing a free service you have to over deliver you have to exceed the expectations of those clients um you have to care about them and the project and that's the thing i talk about all the time is this caring aspect and how that gets you referrals because if you just mail it in because you provided a free service that's not going to work um mm-hmm. and that's and so right. I think that's a big part of it is is just making sure that that you're focused on the right things and that will then turn into more referrals and more business. Yeah, and I would never do that again. It was it was like this is what was needed to launch us and show that we had the skills. And honestly, in a lot of ways, we've taken on a number of jobs where we told the client um, we can do this. Well, we kind of knew that we didn't necessarily know how to do it, and we're like. It's fine. We're going to get the job. We're going to get in there. We're going to figure it out. And that's what we've done. You know, so in that case, I learned almost, I, I learned probably like 75% of the skills that I use today by like doing my best for this guy. You know, obviously I'm getting, I'm working for free, but I'm learning so much about what I have to do to be successful for people who are going to pay down the road. And, and it really paid off. Well, and I also think too that there's another nugget inside of this story. And that is that you were willing to share with this guy that you had a part-time marketing agency. Mm -hmm. And had you not done that, he wouldn't have known. Mm -hmm. And he's not, you know, the the problem is, and I'm not advocating for those people who work for somebody else that they talk about their side hustle. But what I am advocating is that you absolutely have to tell people about yourself and your company. Um, That's marketing. That's, that's, that's networking. That's, communicating it's not braggadocious you're not mm-hmm. selling this thing it's way different if you walk into McDonald's or you go through the Dunkin Donuts drive through and you hand out your business card to the person giving you your coffee right. you shouldn't be doing that <laughs> but you have to tell people that you exist mm-hmm. yeah it's timing Do you struggle with that Tyler um, no, I'm a pretty confident person. I, there are, you know, I'll say this, there, there are situations where I have this internal debate. I'm like, this might be a time to share this information and maybe it's too much, or maybe, maybe I don't know this person well enough. Um, but there have been many more times I'd say when I kind of saw the opportunity and was like, okay, maybe I feel a little weird, but this is it. I got to jump on it. And I, I, that tends to pay off. I've, I've, I've never regretted telling somebody that this is what I am and this is what I do. Now, what's interesting is you have a depth of knowledge in the fish tank cleaning industry I'll call it I have what is that called what is it, the aquarium service industry I would call it okay good the aquarium service industry are you focused on that industry for the marketing side of your business you know that's a great question and it's something that I've thought a lot about but I I haven't really been no um, and it's probably because you're freaking out mentally like well if I focus on this then I can't help the shoe guy <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's a little bit of that. I think it's thinking about like, you know, I don't think necessarily that's where my growth clientele is. Um, it, it may it may be at some point. Um, mm-hmm. It's something I have to I have to think more about because it's true. I do know. Well, the one of the things I wrote about in, in my new book is this idea that oftentimes small businesses and service based businesses cast this really wide net and then mm-hmm. they're lucky to catch a single fish. Mm-hmm. like what was happening when you first started. But when you're shooting fish in a barrel, as they say, or in an aquarium tank, and it's stuck full of fish, you're going to catch a fish. The thing is, I know nothing about the aquarium industry. And neither does anybody else. 
Sure. And so the minute you start focusing on that industry, you can talk about all the language, the jargon, the technical speak that all those people are familiar with, and they will choose you over me any day. The number one question I got when I owned the website agency oh. was, let's, let's say it was a shoe person. Mm. Have you ever done a shoe website before? No, uh, mm. I mean, it translate, I can do it. I've done a lot of other stuff. Realtor, have you ever done a realtor website before? No. Mortgage, have you ever done what? No. I mean, I got to start somewhere. I will I can start with you. Right. And it doesn't build confidence in their mind, but the minute they hear yes, now you're ahead of the next competitor. And really think point. about it. How many people are really focused on the aquarium service industry? I'm sure it's a, small Not a, group, a very small group of, yeah. Yeah, and with what you do, there's a lot of text message marketing that can go to the customers. There's a lot of geo-targeted ads that can go to the customer. So the thing is, I think mentally we think we're narrowing our field when in fact what's happening is we're increasing it because we go into this pool of candidates and we are now the only marketing company answering questions for the aquarium service industry. That's absolutely right. It's absolutely right. I can literally see the light bulbs going off in your head right now. Yeah, it's, well, it's funny because I've had this conversation before and I, I'm trying to remember why we decided not to pursue it. We had this whole plan. We were going to write ads and yeah. then we went a different direction. But I, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about it going, wow, well, why didn't I do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's 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 interesting because it's the one thing I regretted about owning my agency is that I didn't do it soon enough. Mm. I wish we had gone into a niche, you know, a target market a lot sooner um, and picked one. We had the toys for tots, and then that kind of at, toward the end before I sold it, um, we were focused on habitat and attorneys. Um, and don't get me wrong, habitat and attorneys, habitat for humanity websites and attorneys was like 25% of our business. Mm. That's what we were, you know, selling at the end in new business was about 25%. 75% was all the other stuff. Mm. So it was everything from like I say, a realtor to, uh, you know, uh, maybe another type of marketing company, an IT company, or it, sure. there's so many different manufacturers down in Boston. So everybody just filled in the other stuff. But at some point when you become the specialist in those fields, they start to turn to you. Um, and the funny thing is, this is a good, good um, uh, example of why I tell people that tar going into a target market is great. To shoot the fish in the barrel, all you have to do is go find the Facebook group. Mm. There's a Facebook group for everything. That's right. That's right. And so there's very likely an aquarium service industry Facebook group for business owners there to try and grow and market their company. Mm. And when you go in and they say, hey, I can't get my Google places to work. I can't. I'm having yeah. this problem with my email marketing. I don't understand click rate, through rate, all these things. What do I do? And you just answer the questions for free. And next mm. thing you know, they're calling you up. Hey, Tyler, I need some help. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, that's smart. Very smart. It's 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 the other reason why I think a lot of people like the, the handout, the flyer thing. A lot of people start with that. Yeah. But then, you know, it's like we're 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 giving marketing information to people who don't want it. It's kind of like, right. the, you know, the direct mail piece you know there's a lot of direct mail you're gonna have to do to get that client what yeah. has worked I mean you, you talked about this connection what has worked to get you to grow um, beyond this one connection that you talk about yeah so uh, it's mostly a lot of it's been strange one-offs but I've been you know you look for patterns you look for opportunities so for example I I've had a number of conversations get started because I went on LinkedIn and I went through pages of job application opportunities right for people for companies who are looking for like a single marketer and mm -hmm. if i've like i've narrowed it down right so if you just send an application through linkedin to somebody who's doing that you're not going to get a response period because they're not interested in an agency right they're interested in an individual and you know they have various reasons to shut you down but if an email address is listed i found i can reach out to someone through the email address and my response rate is much higher. It's not great, but it's much higher. And I've, I landed a fantastic client doing that. She, it was a, a woman who runs a um, public school in Boston and they were looking to hire a marketing team or, or a single marketer, frankly. And I emailed them all of our stuff because her email was listed in that, in that thing, in that LinkedIn post. And yeah, and I was probably also the first person there. So that was about being consistent because I have had I not, had I checked that three days later, 
somebody else would have gotten there already and I would have had no shot. But I was probably the mm. very first or top out of 10 people to get in there. And the next day we were, we were cooking. Um, so, so looking for things like that. Uh, another one I found was I follow this rock band on, uh, on Facebook who I'm a big fan of. And uh, the lead singer also owns his own record label. And so he's got like six or seven bands on the label, plus the band that he sings for. And one day he posted on Facebook, you know, I'm looking for creative for a creative, you know, person, someone who can do social media or graphic design or whatever. And he said, if you know that, if you have that skill set, send me an email. Now, there were hundreds of comments on this post. I'm sure tons of people reached out, but I got a I got a call with him. This was just a few days ago, actually. I got a call with him and we secured that deal very quickly. Um but like because again, you that, sent him an email because I sent him an email and it was a you know very carefully thought out and I had my whole team on the phone call so I was able to kind of be prepared to tell him what I wanted to tell him. Um, Here's but the yeah, thing that with that about follow. Why can't people follow instructions? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> and and the other thing is, you're never gonna get. I I shouldn't say never because that's a very absolute thing. You're rarely gonna get business if someone tags you on a Facebook post. Mm -hmm. It's such a soft introduction, yeah. and it's often lost, it's not pinned, there's no additional contact information. The right way to introduce somebody, folks, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, the right way to introduce somebody using Facebook is to send a group message to the person looking for the help with the person you're referring in a group message and have the person agree to call the service provider, or at mm -hmm. least to take the service provider's call via the messaging. Now all three of you are involved in this thing. What happens when you do this type of thing is it becomes accountable, accountability, and, and, and people become accountable and responsible for making those connections. Will they get the sale? Well, there's no guarantee, but they're likely not going to get it with just a simple tag on a Facebook post. And I see that all the time. And look what happened in your case. You actually followed the instructions, was able to get the phone call, and then got the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I, that's I, a big component of that. Yeah. Yeah. I had another um, sort of interesting example that was coming up. I've, I've got another ones through Facebook posts. And um, I had a guy who was a similar one where he was actually advertising on Facebook, not LinkedIn. And um, another one where an email was listed, sent an email, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's incredible what can happen if you just look for that for that little thing in there. Right, right. Now, um, one of the things I love to talk to people about on on these calls and and to try and help other people grow their business is software. What type mm -hmm. of software do you use, or would you recommend that another small business owner use? in their small business to help them gain traction or, or could be a game changing software? Well, let's see. So we're in terms of, in terms of like marketing software internally, we're, we're still kind of working on some of that stuff. What we use for internal contact, we use Slack, um, love Slack. Oh, okay. Basically, you know, if your listeners are not familiar with it, it's basically, I can use multiple different channels to keep everything super organized. And I'm actually not the most organized person. I'm, uh, it's really not a strong suit for me. But Slack like forces me to be because I've got different channels for every um, company that I'm working with. I've got channels for different topics internally, and we're all so when we're all in there, I'm following carefully what's going on, so I don't have my team members distracted and going all kinds of weird places. I know what's going on all the time. And the other thing we use is oh, I'm trying to think. Let's see what, oh yeah, we we keep everything also on Google Drive. We use files for that. So yeah, everything from everything from. Uh, signed deals with clients to mm -hmm. graphics that we've been working on carefully folded into particular files tax information it's all there yeah that's wow. good i mean i you know i've i use slack for nonprofit that i'm involved with and then i also mm -hmm. use it to connect with other people at other companies um, who also use slack so that's great as well i don't use it as my primary for me i kind of use google chat with my team mm -hmm. but um it's uh slack works really well well and and just a note to the audience i mean i i know this might seem weird you're listening to podcasts you might be running you might be on the treadmill or you're watching this but just raise your hand if you like tyler and like me are not the most organized people on the planet yeah that's not me how many people are raising their hand right now running down the road and 
<laughs> and other people are looking at him and go, "Why are you raising your hand?" <laughs> well, I feel like that's such a common thing for business one. owners. You know, like I feel yeah. like because business owners are about vision and they're about progress, and they're often not people who are you know putting things together very carefully back at home. Like that's it's just it's the attitude yeah. necessarily not everybody has. That's very true. Very true. Um, and so then, are, are you a big reader? Yeah, yeah, I love to read. I, I've read more probably this. So let's talk about business more. books. What business books would you recommend? that other business owners read? Yeah, so I knew you were gonna ask this, so I wrote it down. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, yeah, I've watched your podcast, man. So, um, a couple of ones start out to me. So, I love the book uh, Traction by Gabriel Weinberg. Oh, yeah, Gino Mark. Wickman, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, no, not Gino Wickman, actually a different book called Traction. <laughs> Wait, who's this one by? This one's by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Morris. Okay. And this okay. one, basically, he what they do is so they're found. They were founders of DuckDuckGo, which is yeah. the it's a search engine that doesn't track your information. So kind of a unique play on the search engine. And what they do in the book is it's a very up to date, very modern look at the different marketing channels you can use to achieve um, to achieve traction in your business. So they go through like twenty or twenty twenty five different channels that you can use. Um, everything from pay-per-click ads to social media posts to PR opportunities and they list some fundamentals of each one it's not obviously super high detail because they're trying to hit a lot of things at once but it's a great introduction to be like wow I didn't even realize that this was an option for me for marketing um, so it's like it's like a quick reference book almost in that sense so um, what we're gonna do in the show notes is we're gonna list both books on traction so that the listeners are very clear which one is which um, because the traction that gets a lot of buzz is the one by Gina Wickman talking about the visionary person versus the tactical person in a business and that they talk about these quarterly business meetings that you have that, that drive a business forward big rocks little rocks things like that um this is very unique so it, by the way if 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 you're listening right now or watching what what you might not know is that book titles cannot be trademarked so you can have the same book title on multiple books and that's where the confusion comes in with some of these things so we want to make sure that we get that um correct for the people on the show notes we'll make sure we list it on the website uh when the in the episode notes to make sure that you have the right link to the right book uh, accordingly so that sounds like a good book actually it's been out. awesome yeah i loved it and um i guess i'd say another book that i loved was uh the big short by michael lewis um Oh yeah. Uh, obviously kind of a classic, but yeah, it spoke to me. I read it in a weekend. Like I ignored my entire family, just like <laughs> couldn't stop reading it. <laughs> that's that's the guy that bet on the fact that the housing market was gonna fail, right? So yeah, he he wrote the book about a number of people who who bet against it. Yeah. There were there was everything. Okay. There were two college yeah. students, there was um there was a guy who uh, worked in a hedge fund, a couple of other different traders. Right. Uh, and it's incredibly inspiring. I mean, the way that they found this and they beat the odds and all the people who were naysayers essentially to uh, to to fund their fortune. I remember the guy that was in the uh, in the stock brokerage firm. He bought some, and then there were a bunch of naysayers. And actually, the market went in the other direction yeah. it, against what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. it, the market went up, not down, and he bought more. <laughs> and he just kept buying more and more and more. And then eventually, it crashed and he yeah. looked like the smart guy in the whole thing that's right great book great book those are great books and i and i hope that our listening audience will check them out i mean i think there's some a lot of great nuggets here that we've dropped today from tyler about marketing and just the way he's grown his business in just a few short years so you got to keep keep that in, in mind and don't forget to to pay attention to the the, um, the vertical market that you're focused on, your target market, because, um, you know, like we talked about on the show today, maybe you, you can find clients easier when, when whatever industry you're in, as you're listening to this podcast, you might be able to find clients easier than you currently are if you are actually focusing on on uh, target market. Now, Tyler, how can people get a hold of you? They want to learn more about you. They want to do some networking with you. How can they get a hold of you? Yes, so um, you can reach me at info at trajexms.com. That's our email address. Um, our website is trajexms.com. Um, and I can also be reached by phone at 845-417-6828. All right, cool. We're going to put all that in the show notes. Hopefully you got some value from it, folks. If, if you uh, enjoyed this uh, podcast, I hope that you'll like and share it on YouTube. Share it on social media. Tell the world about it. And don't forget to give us a, a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time, don't forget.
to live happy, smile a lot, and high five everyone around you. Thank you for listening to the Mass Business Podcast, where we focus on growing a small business and understanding networking and referrals. Don't forget to like on your favorite platform and share out this podcast. This show has been produced by Heather Grant, music by Celtic Kelly, all rights reserved. I'm your host, professional speaker, author, and word of mouth referral consultant, Matt Ward. Don't forget to live happy, smile a lot, and high five. Everyone around you. Feeling all right. I find the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find the world. Make a difference today. I find the world. What a thing to say. Do you feel what I'm telling you?